welcome to the Bible Study Hour. And a very special welcome to a section of the Bible that is no doubt your favorite. Because for this quarter, we are studying the Psalms. So we hope that you have your study guide with you. And if not, then have your Bible with you because we are going to be referring to the Psalms quite a lot. I'm very pleased to know that this week in our study, we have to share with you Pastor James Sunlin, and he is with me here, Lorna Stevenson, and together you will have the discussion running with us as we take you through lesson number three. Of course, before we open the Bible, you know that we need to talk to God so that he can give us the necessary guidance as we go through in understanding his word. So join us now for our opening prayer. Our God and our Father in heaven, you are the sovereign ruler of the universe. And we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to open your words and be enlightened and be instructed and comforted. So let your Holy Spirit teach us and use us as we seek to be a blessing to our viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are instructed here that this week's study focuses on some very key descriptions of God and his activities which establish the world and render it from firm and secure. The psalmists appeal to God, who is the creator, king, judge, covenantal savior, and lawgiver. So all of these themes are themes that we will discuss this week, Pastor. And it's very interesting to note that for every reference that we have in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. If one is given, we can find 10 more. Of course. If five are given, we can find 50 more. That's right. Because the, the Psalms repeat it's themselves mm -hmm. in, in the various themes right. that we have to discuss. So, as we look at the topic, the Lord reigns, Let's see what we are getting from our memory text, which is Psalm 93, verse 1. And the New International Version says, The, the Lord, Lord reigns. reigns. He, he is, is robed, robed in, in majesty. majesty. The, the Lord, Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. strength. Indeed, Indeed, the world is established firm. firm and secure. It, it, it seems, Pastor, if I ask you to give your thoughts on this, I might be asking you to give your thoughts on the entire lesson, <laughs> but thoughts nonetheless. Well, one of the main thing that the psalmists tend to dwell on here and in many other places is that God reigns. Mm -hmm. And I think it is very important when we look at who we are, look at mm -hmm. the creation, because there are some persons who believe otherwise. Yes. That it's man who reigns, it's man who is in charge, you know? And um, we think that we can handle everything on our own because we have the power. But we have to affirm this wonderful message that God reigns. And to, 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 to reign has a lot of implications mm -hmm. that we, we will pay attention to. Right. So when we are saying God reigns, we are saying God is in charge. That's right. And as That's we right. say sometimes, God runs things. <laughs> exactly All so. All right, good. <laughs> That's right. So we look at the first aspect of our study for this week, which talks about the Lord has made us. Mm -hmm. So when we consider the fact that God reigns, we are establishing at the very beginning the whole idea that he has a right to reign. Of course he does. Because he made us mm -hmm. 
So he's in charge of us. Sure. He is over us. That's right. Let's look at some references we have here, and we are going to be using these two. Psalm 8, we'll take verses 3 to 5 and verse 9. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with the glory and honor. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Okay, so we see Psalm 8 there pointing out that it is God who made us. That's right. I'll just read one verse from Psalm 100, although Psalm 100 is a well-known psalm, maybe some people's favorite psalm, and they can read all five verses, but the one I'll read is verse 3. It says... Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Th this says it so clearly that, you know, you hardly want to call for a comment, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that there is something that might be popping out at you, Pastor, that you would like to share with us. There is the tendency for, for humanity to uh, stay away from God mm -hmm. and not to give him the praise. We, we tend to put a lot of accolades on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of programs, national, international, where persons are given the accolade. But not much is given to God by many persons in our world. God is not being seen and he's not worshipped. And the psalmist is just calling us to recognize that uh, God is good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We need to know that he is God and, and, and that he's the one who deserves true worship and to give him the honor and the glory. So the psalmist is, is as if uh, he's making a comparison. Yes. He is God. We are his creatures. That's yeah. right. So he's above us, beyond us, and, mm -hmm. and, and everything uh, far beyond us. And so it is the acknowledgement that we are dependent on him. Good. So God is creator, and the people that he has created mm -hmm. do well to praise him. Of course, of course. And it's interesting that God desires uh, to keep this kind of a link mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that we can always remember that we did not create ourselves. No. God did that. And therefore, God is worthy of our praise and our honor and adoration. Right. And I'd like to yes. also look on the matter of the, the creation. Mm -hmm. Because we do have persons who don't share the idea that we have a sovereign God who created everything. Mm -hmm. There is the idea that things evolved out of nothing. And of course, any practical scientist would know that that's absurd. That's because right. Because nothing can evolve. Things can't evolve out, out of, of nothing. nothing without somebody who... Something who's, has to be there. Yeah, somebody has to have superior power to be able uh, to make the first thing happened. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's important. That's what the psalmist is saying. He's portraying God as the creator. Mm -hmm. Good. And we continue the theme, the thought that the Lord reigns. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a few of the references that we have in the Psalms. So we start with Psalm 97. We're looking at Psalm 97, and we're going to take verses 1, 2, and 9. The Bible says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth, thou art exalted far above all gods. You know, it would be such a beauty 
And all for our good if we would just acknowledge what we just read there, as the psalmist puts it. Totally agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what Psalm 47, verses 6 to 9, will have to teach us. And it is, it is very obvious that the psalmist is very steep in this whole idea of, of, of the God we serve. Yes. Um, he, he's defending, affirming that which, and I can understand because as the psalmist wrote, he is living in, in the midst of people who do not, recognize the true God because there were many gods, That's many right. false gods. That's right. And you, so you can understand what he's saying. And so in Psalm 47, verses 6 to 9, he's saying, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises uh, with understanding. Uh, God reigneth. Yep, God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Mm. I mean, we have said it in other ways before, but, it, the, you know, when it's emphasized, it comes across to us with even more meaning. Yes. You know, he's not only... The God of the Israelites. No. His chosen people. Right. As history has, you know, would give it to us. Sure. But he's the God of the heathen. He's the God of the heathen. That's right. He's the God of everyone. That's right. And, you know, th th this superior position that God holds in his relation to mankind is something that we need to acknowledge and it's something that we need to respect. We have to. We have yes. to. And, and, and as you mentioned that he's the God of also the heathen. Yes. Um, in, in ancient thinking, mm -hmm. uh, those who are not with the gods are hated. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if they do not appease their God mm -hmm. by sacrificing very often a human being, then destruction, disaster, and, and all of that. But our God, he is God of the heathen and the wicked and those who don't even recognize That's him. Right. And he still provides a, a right environment for all to live in. He still caused the rain to fall as, as, as Jesus said in Matthew 5, he caused mm -hmm. the rain to fall and the just and the unjust you know, and the sun to shine and the good and the evil. So he's a God of everyone and he loves each one infinitely. And what, he's, what he wants is for every human being to recognize his sovereignty, his rulership, and to give him the honor and the glory, even those who are wicked. That's right. And as is stated here, that the Lord's reign is established on Mercy, mm -hmm. justice, and righteousness. Right. And it brings order and stability to the created world. Right. So when we are trying to find our ways and means mm -hmm. of bringing order and stability, don't forget that if we don't include God in that, it doesn't we're work. not going to get it, eh? No. It All right. Work. So let's look at the next section of the lesson which talks about God is the judge. In Psalm 75, we have some instructions there and we look at verses 1, 2, 7, and 8. The Bible says, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks for that Thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out the same. 
but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see something happening there. Mm-hmm. It says here that as a sovereign king, the Lord is also a lawgiver. That's right. Now, considering that he, he is lawgiver, mm-hmm. it does seem to me that he being judge is right in order. Of course. <laughs> because he gives the law. Yes. So he knows totally what he is judging. Of course. Not only that, mm-hmm. but as we said previously, he made us. So he knows us. He knows the laws that he has created. And he, he keeps a, a record of, of what he's going to uh, do in his judgment. So in other words, he does not just you know, haphazardly do his thing. Mm-hmm. He's basing his judgment on what he has already written. That's right. So that anyone that is judged would have been knowledgeable of what the rules are. So they're not doing things in ignorance. And so as judge, he is doing righteous judgment, not partial. And his judgment is based on love and mercy. Uh, on all of that uh, in what he does uh, in dealing with us. Sometimes when we talk about judgment and the judge, we become kind of a fearful mm-hmm. and we become mm-hmm. sort of a cautious and we sort of a anticipate, you know, some negative yeah. outcome. Yes. In the passage that you just read, that last section of it says something that would put a little bit of fright <laughs> into mankind. For in the hand of the Lord, mm-hmm. there is a cup. <laughs> yes. Tell us a little bit about that cup. Well, that cup represents the, the overflow of God's wrath. Yes. Because it, it, it's, it is saying that, that those who are disobedient or those who are wicked, and the wicked are not just sinners. Yeah. The wicked are sinners who constantly rebel against the lawgiver mm-hmm. and who has no intention to honor him. They mock him, they write him, they curse him. Mm-hmm. All right? And they are st- set in their ways. Now, what it is saying is that those who do not acknowledge him and worship him and follow his commands, at some point, punishment will be meted out. And um, even in our local context, after law has been given, the government, or even in our own home, Mm -hmm. um, there is mercy with every law that is written as far as I know. But one who does not have the desire to cooperate and to follow. Eventually, judgment and punishment will take place. And I think God does that. And the Bible says that God is merciful. So even when he does his judgment, he does it in mercy. And he's willing to forgive those who are willing to seek forgiveness. And as he prepares to judge his creation... (laughs) You know, he is so thoughtful Mm -hmm. that, you know, he does not leave those he has created to wander around and, you know, you know, not knowing what to expect. Right. He gives us special promises Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's faithful to his promises. He sets up his covenant with us Mm -hmm. and he's mindful of his covenant. That's, That's right. right. He does not forget about them. No. He keeps the covenant ever before him. That's right. So as we look at this section of our study, remembering that we are talking about the Lord reigns. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ever mindful of his covenant, let us look at one or two of the references that we have from the Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 94 verse 14 after which we are going to go to Psalm 105. Psalm 94, verse 14, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. 
Okay, and when we go to 105, we're going to be taking verses 7 to 10. Psalm 105, verses 7 to 10 says, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all of the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. That seems to carry some detail there. Yes. And if we go back to the history that we have studied of God and how he led his people, right. we can see how the covenant was repeated at different stages That's right. in the history of God's people. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob and coming all the way down, mm -hmm. he's mindful of his covenant. Now, I wonder, Pastor, what is the essence of this covenant as it relates to the study we are having now? Well, remember that man, mankind messed up, mm -hmm. failed in, in, in honoring God, living for him. Yeah. And God made a promise from the very beginning mm -hmm. in Genesis 3.15 that uh, the seed of the woman would come one day, which is Christ. Okay. And he would save his people. But even as he made that promise, mankind continually transgressed his law. So he made a call, a call to Abraham, and Abraham answered the call to represent God, to be that, that channel of light yes. to the rest. Mm -hmm. And God made a promise that, look, if you follow me, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your generations. And I'm going to give you a place to call your own where you will settle down. Right. And God remembered that promise all through to the generations that he's going to uh, save them. He's going to put them in a place. He's going to provide for them, protect them. And, and, and that is what the, the whole passage is talking about. God remembers his covenant with his people. And he's not saying the, the, the all creation is not his people. Mm -hmm. But he's specializing in saying those who are willing to cooperate and walk with me. Because a covenant is an agreement. Not That's with right. One. It's not a one-sided thing. No, not thing. one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. So the people of Israel would have to agree that they also want to do what God said. And God remembered his covenant. So what this is saying is that God is faithful mm -hmm. to what he promised. Right. And as you know, you talk about the inheritance that is embedded in the covenant mm -hmm. and God promised them the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. sometimes referred to as the promised land. Yes. And when we sing our songs, yes, we talk about the promised yeah. land as well yes. and that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. For it, it extends beyond planet Earth. the geographic That's right. Canaan mm -hmm. in planet Earth. Yes. And because God is so mindful, notice how the lesson also reminds us of how he prepared for his people. So although his people mm -hmm. were in bondage right. in Egypt, mm -hmm. he prepared Joseph. Yes, certainly. As a savior there right, for them. Right, right. Bondage in Egypt, he prepared Moses. Yes. I wonder if we are in bondage now. Oh, we're and in what's spiritual. the preparation that he has made for we're us? We're in spiritual bondage. That's right. Uh, and God is going to deliver us yes, once right. we are willing to cooperate with the covenant. We have a part to play. And if we cooperate, God will certainly give us the promise of the heavenly Canaan. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for by faith. Notice in all of our study, as we go through and we look at all of these references and we talk about God reigning from beginning to, in fact, I shouldn't even say that <laughs> because his reign is everlasting. everlasting. That's right. As far as we are concerned, mm -hmm. we don't know about any beginning. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Except what there, the word of God reveals. That's right. And there is no end to his reign. That's right. That's right. But we are closing on the thought that 
God's testimonies are very sure. Very sure. That's right. And we take our references from Psalm 19, verse 7. And we will look at one or two others. Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. I'm sure you would love to comment on that, but let's look at Psalm 93, verse 5. Psalm 93, verse 5. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness belongeth unto thine house, O Lord, forever. You so, know, one of the things I like about, you know, studying the Bible yes. is that it repeats itself. Yeah, that's, that's correct. So that's that correct. what you're hearing here, you're hearing somewhere else. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you know that this thing holds throughout that's the right. word of God. That's right. Go ahead. Now, when we talk about testimonies, uh, we're talking about, you know, God's law, mm -hmm. God's, God's revelation of truth, his instructions to us. In other words, the psalmist is saying God does not make a mistake. He is certain about what he has planned and what he promised to do. Right. You can rely on his word. His, his word, his laws, his truth uh, will not need any editing or, or, or upgrading. It is standard and firm, and it is based on his character. And mm -hmm. if God is the God who does not change, then mm -hmm. his word uh, does not need. So you and I can have the confidence in what God's plan is and who he is, that he will not change. He is sure and certain as a faithful uh, reigning ruler. Beautiful. Let's wrap up our study for this week as we look at Psalm 18, verse 30. And in Psalm 18, verse 30 is uh, another beautiful uh, promise that we have. Psalm 18 and verse 30. The Bible says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. So wow. the word of God wow. is perfect. Wish no we had more time, you know, pastor, to make some more comments on yes. these, you know, passages. Because they are so important to our understanding who we are. Yes. And who God really is. He's a God of integrity. Yes. Yes. And, you know, a, a small comment here says that the Lord's supremacy in the world as the sovereign creator, mm -hmm. king, and judge has a theological implication for the reliability of his testimonies. Right. I, I don't know that I can say it any better than is yeah. said here. <laughs> and with all of the wonderful expressions that you have made to, yes. I think... That sums up our study. Yes. The Lord reigns. Mm -hmm. Viewers, I know that there is much more you would like to get from the study of the psalm. And I know that you are committed to read more of the psalms and to read all that you can. And in reading to ask God for understanding so that we can get a new grasp, a clearer vision of who God really is and that he reigns in our life. I just want to ask you to join us next week when we meet again for our Bible study hour. And I know that you will invite others to join in as well for this very special study. And we say thanks to those who have made it possible for us to reach you. Thanks to God for providing this wonderful opportunity. Thanks to our sponsor, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. And as we prepare for more study of God's word, let us give him that special thanks as you join us now in our closing prayer. Oh God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for who you are. You're a God who is perfect. You are holy. You are the all-powerful. And you are the merciful, forgiven God. We can rely on you. We can trust you. And we thank you for 
making it known to us through your words who you are and what your plans are for your people. Thank you for loving all of humanity and for your willingness to save us. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will seek to give you all the honor and the praise to worship you from our whole heart. Bless our viewers as they seek to know you more. This we ask through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you.